Now many times when teaching your child math or any other subjects, you parents might feel a little frustrated and your child will get a little flustered. In this video, we unbox 5 real and common problems that parents face while teaching their child math as well as tips to help your child learn better. Now on to the first problem. Let's see, after doing countless assessment books and having many tuitions, my child is still not able to do that. Your child gets their information from different channels. They have their teacher, you yourself as a parent, and maybe they get a tutor. And then, hey, their aunt comes along and says, I can teach you math. And you have a cousin that says, I can do it for homework. When different people say different things, your child is bound to get confused. Our goal is to make it as clear and concise as possible for them. Studies have shown that weaker students can work better with highly structured explanations and clear guidance. But no matter how long they take to understand something, it does not affect how well they actually do. So which means that if they take a longer period of time and they actually understand it and apply it well, they are able to do even better and accelerate from it. So it's not about doing more, but it's about understanding, apply it and repeat. My child doesn't seem to understand the question at all. Beyond the stories and illustrations and all the different kind of problem sums, whether it be they use different names like Ali, James, John, um, motorcycles and cars, uh, chickens and cows, Balloons. Focus on the concepts because these concepts can be repeated rather than the question repeating itself. One method is to read the question sentence by sentence and to ask yourself, you know, what can you actually do? And then apply the concept from there. He or she can do topical worksheets, but not the exams. This one is really tricky. What if I tell you that your child is actually memorizing the steps, worse still, copying? They might be actually memorizing the steps or the presentations rather than committing it to real concept knowledge. Usually in the topical worksheets, they might test the same concepts or the same topics, same kind of questions all in one. So they are able to do everything correctly but when you test them down the road, they might forget. In the moment, they can remember it, but it stays as short-term memory. You gotta help them to commit in long-term memory through consistent exposure and pit stop reviews and assessments down the road. One thing that can happen is exam anxiety, but we cannot totally control it for every child. What we can control is to make things as familiar and as well practiced for them when they step into their exams. So when we see the questions, it's like, hey, I did this before. Hey, I'm able to apply the same concept. It's not something new out of the blue, you know. If it is something new, then they most likely might panic in the exam and it's really not good. Now this one is really, really, really common. They keep making careless mistakes. You can help your child reduce it by getting him or her to show his workings clearly and don't skip steps. There are really different careless mistakes. Like, you know, writing the values, the names wrongly. They might press the calculator wrongly. They might manually calculate and do their long division wrongly. And all these are different careless mistakes. They are able to identify the particular careless mistake that they keep making. It helps to reduce it specifically. My child says that math is boring and he or she has zero interest in math. Now, most of the time, it's not natural for a child to love math or even like math. What you can do is to be very deliberate in their daily lives and in their environment. I mean, when you go to the supermarket with your kids, things like plain flour, we can actually ask them, you know, hey, this plain flour is 1 kg. Helping them to see that, you know, how does 1 kg feel like is very important. 1 kg, 1,000 grams. And then, this fresh milk here is 1.89 liters. Now, it's a, a bit of a tricky measurement to get used to, but 
knowing that this weighs around 2 liters, being very deliberate with your real life situation helps them a lot. If 600 grams, we have 10 eggs. So, one egg is 60 grams. When you do baking with your kids, you can ask them in a recipe how much flour is needed, how much milk is needed, and how many eggs are needed. How many servings will that be? It actually gives them an idea of concepts and topics like mass, volume, you know, like um, even practicing their division and multiplication in this case and getting them to be aware about estimates. Like for example, the height of the building. Like, what time is it now? If we need to go to somewhere, uh, what time must we meet? You know, all these questions to get them accustomed to thinking math. They don't have to sit down and read and write math. Simple things like that helps to make math come alive. And when they're so used to working their minds in their real life situations, it's very natural for them to apply it in their schoolwork and their exams. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. We hope that this tips really help you. And be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. Check out our other videos and we'll see you guys in the next video.